Hello and welcome to my channel. It's Roshan Curie here and in today's video I'm going to show you how I make magic memories. Well we're into October and it's pouring rain outside and I've just finished one of my little sketchbooks and I look back through this and I'm struck by very real and vivid memories of the days of summer that are just only just in the rearview mirror long long days of sunshine and warmth and swimming and now we're into autumn and the leaves are beginning to fall off the trees and they're beautiful and they're golden and it's a lovely time of year but I do love to have a little book of memories that I can look back through and relive all those beautiful days. So today I'm going to take you through this little sketchbook and I hope you enjoy it. So this book covers Gozo on the island of Malta where I went on my summer holidays with my family and then to Galway where I live and then down to Waterford, Dunmore East in County Waterford where I was doing some teaching. And the first two sketches here are actually stuck in from sketches I made while I was teaching down in County Waterford. On the left we have some seaweed and some little crabs and I was using those subjects to demonstrate the wet on wet technique and I have to say the seaweed and the crabs they lent themselves beautifully to teaching this because there's enough space there to swirl the colours around. Isn't the little crab on the right absolutely adorable? It's the same crab it's just seen from the top and from the bottom. And then on the right hand side I did a values exercise and I used some of the many horse chestnuts that were falling off the trees all around me to show how you can use the one colour, in this case burnt umber, to go from zero all the way to six, which is the darkest value you get out of burnt umber. Now, this one, we were sitting on the plane on the way to Malta and that's my son on the right hand side and he was taking part in this very silly online challenge where you do absolutely nothing on a flight you don't eat you don't speak you don't use the bathroom you just sit there and you don't move no matter how long the flight is and you did very well I have to say sitting there in his fine Stetson hat and then on the left hand side I did a little map of Gozo and Malta kind of like a fun little vintagey thing with sea monsters and octopuses and all that good stuff. And it's a really fun way to decorate a page. All you need is some brown ink and a little bit of brown paint and away you go. Maybe a few letter stamps, as you can see there. Very useful little things. Now, once we got to the island, we were absolutely bowled over by the fabulousness of the sea. It was so gorgeous and it was turquoise and we'd had a rotten old summer in Ireland. So you can imagine we barely got out of the sea from the time we arrived on the island until the time we left seven days later. So it was kind of like a bit of a fjord cutting into the into the rock. The water is crystal clear and turquoise. And it's just perfect. We drank our fill of cocktails while we were there and there's nothing quite like a, a mojito with fresh mint leaves squashed into it. We sat there on this lovely little restaurant very close to where we were staying called the Terrazzo. And we drew the tourists, well at least I did. And I drew the sea. And I drew the people sitting around enjoying the sun as much as we were. Now by the pool in the hotel where we were staying there was a big bush of cacti this flat lobed cactus is everywhere and I sat in the pool and well I got out long enough to do the to do the sketch but I had my sketch pocket with me which you'll see more of in a little bit but um it was it was always by my side which meant that I got tons and tons of sketches done now my son Paddy decided that he would do a lot of sketching as well and he asked me to guide him through a sketch of a coffee cup which I did and he did a lovely job and then after the cup of coffee I ordered Baitra, Baitra Spritz which is the local liqueur made of cacti and it's pink and they put a slice of dried cactus in it which leaches into the cocktail and makes it dark red and I have to say the rest of the sketch was done under the influence of the very strong Baitra Spritz. So I don't know if it's better or worse for that, but it was certainly a lot of fun. You can see a pedalo in the background there called a CMW, which is very, very witty. Now, this is the pool where we were staying and I spent a lot of time there because I was really relaxing and it was heaven. Very small, very unassuming. Actually, it's the second pool. There was a, another one elsewhere that was full of babies. But this one was just right. And I loved painting the reflection of the various bits of the hotel in the water. Very relaxing. 
as you can see, there's lots of shade to be had. And we had a barbecue there on the last night, which was fab. Well, at the end of the afternoon, after I forced myself to get out of the lovely pool, I went upstairs to the balcony of the room where my two younger kids were staying, Paddy and Livy. And just because I had my sketch pocket with me, I was able to grab the sketch of Liv listening to music with her headphones on. And she's wearing her brother's lobster slides. And when I say lobster, I mean... They're in the shape of a lobster, gripping your foot. And they're very funny. And everyone who sees Paddy wearing the slides says, I like your shoes, man. Hey, man, I like your lobsters. Which is all very nice. What about the next one? Oh, yeah, this was a really, really hot, hot afternoon. I was here for about two hours and I was really loving capturing the look of the bay. Well, I suppose the fjord, if you like. And all those people in the water, they were all the gozatans having a fabulous time, bobbing around in the water and shooting the breeze and hats on and, and, and their hair not getting one bit wet. And the divers at the bottom of the sea, so you can see those little piles of bubbles. And it was lovely. It was just lovely. On the day we left, Paddy wanted to draw the beer because we'd had rather a lot of it during the holiday. And I don't think I made a very good job of it. And I tried to mitigate my bad drawing by doing some fun little sketches of all the food we'd had, mostly drink really, while we were in Gozo. So that was fun. I think it's something I'm going to do more often when I go somewhere because it's a really nice way to remember all the nice things you've had to eat. Well, back home in Galway... And the weather was good to us. And I went off into the barren with my lovely friend, Benita. And we sat there and we had a picnic and I drew the wildflowers in the foreground because really you can't beat the barren on a beautiful summer's day. It really is paradise. If ever you get a chance to go to the west of Ireland, don't miss out on a chance to go to see the barren. I went back the next day with my other lovely friend, Lorraine, and did a little bit more sketching and a little bit more flowers. And it was just fab. Back in Galway, it was time to welcome a group from all over the world and within Ireland to do a little workshop. So every year up until this year, I've done workshops in Galway City at the end of August. And this is Galway Cathedral. And because my book is so small, it looks like I chose a really cool angle, but actually I just couldn't fit any more of it in because it's a very small book. But I did have lots of space to do the slightly misty, threatening sky. And the group I was with, sitting on the bridge, looking at the at the cathedral, they really enjoyed a few tips there. Now, the very next day, we went to Galway Market and we did some drawing. Now, I gave the instruction that they were to listen out and hear what the people were saying in the market and see if they could concentrate on recording conversations rather than trying to concentrate on capturing the action in drawings. And it was a good exercise because it meant that they didn't feel so much pressure to get the drawing right. And this is an oyster seller and he's shucking oysters for all the tourists and he's chatting away and he really liked having his, his picture done. He's called Michael. And the oysters were delicious. They were tiny little things and they were so tasty. Now here we have an unfinished drawing on the left which I meant to go back and finish drawing. But every time I went into Galway to try and go down and finish off the sketch, I was either too rushed or the weather wasn't quite right. Or if the truth be told, I was just too lazy to walk down to the river. So it's totally on me that I now have an unfinished sketch on the left hand side. On the right, we have a puppeteer and he was very clever. And he dresses himself in the same clothes as he dresses I mean, the other way around. He dresses his puppet in the same clothes that he dresses himself. Oh, whatever. And then the following weekend, I met my friend Benita and I drew the Crinina Mod, which is the festival of the Galway hookers racing across Galway Bay. It's a beautiful sight and it's always held at this time every year. To be honest, I haven't done it justice. So you'll just have to go and see it for yourself because it's a site you'll never forget. I went down to Mulrug, which is the seashore quite close to me, and it was late in the afternoon and it was sizzling hot and I managed to capture the shimmer on the sea. But the real thing I wanted to capture was the clouds, the way the sun was quite low in the sky and was lighting up the clouds from behind. So I went back about, I think it was the next day, and I did it again, but I didn't really quite capture it in the same way. It doesn't matter. I love doing it. I love success or failure. I love to sit on the shore with my paints and just paint away. There's nothing quite like it. It's very, very peaceful. September came around and with it, acorns and horse chestnuts. So in class with my 
brand new sketch club. We sketched that together and I have to say the guys really seemed to enjoy it and they went out and foraged for tree fruits of their own and they put some gorgeous work into the little group we have. It's such, it's such a nice thing to do, especially if you have letter stamps. Everything is better with letter stamps. A couple of days later, I was with my mum in her house over on the East Coast. And I don't know, I was just sitting on the sofa in her art room and I decided it would make a fun value sketch. So I drew it with the bluey grey ink that I use that I love. It's called Frida and it's by Rohr and Klingner in their sketching range. And then I use Payne's grey, just the one colour. Again, just like the value sketch you saw at the beginning of the book, in shades from zero, which is not painting the page at all, all the way to six, which is the concentrated form of the ink, undiluted, and every shade in between. Very useful little exercise. Now, this one is where my mum and I and my brother, we all went up into the Dublin mountains. My brother to go picking blueberries or frockens, as we call them in Ireland. My mum to paint with her easel and me to sit around and sketch. And that's little Reuben the terrier behind my mum and her little dog Babette is somewhere out of view. There's a piece in my blog, by the way, about this particular afternoon. Um, it's worth reading if you like really, really stupid, but possibly, possibly, dare I hope, entertaining writing. Because we went back the next day, my mum and I, and we heard a chainsaw. And of course, I feared the worst. Now, the next day, I painted this bright red toadstool, and it's called Rustula emetica, which means if you take a nibble of it, you're going to throw up. And then I had a blank space on the right hand side, but I wanted to sort of balance that red. So I painted some blackberries and some red blackberries, some slightly under ripe ones. And then I stamped it and it says Rubus fruticosus. And much as I love blackberries, I hate brambles because I did turn my back on them in our garden. And now some of them are about to strangle us. They've got so thick and weedy. Big mistake. Don't turn your back on blackberries. Over on the East Coast, once again, going for a walk on my own one evening. And I had my sketch pocket with me, as I always do. So I took my opportunity to sketch the shore and all those cute seagulls standing on the pebbly beach in Bray. I was attracted to it because of the yellow and red stripy boats and then the yellow and red stripy, I suppose, lifeguard hut in the background. I found myself in a hotel in Galway City with my son, Paddy, and I drew him. And he did tell me he'd keep completely still and then immediately made an utter liar of himself because he unzipped his jacket and he changed his hair and he did all kinds of things. So my drawing isn't very good, really. And he's not crazy about it. But that's what happens if you don't keep still. Anyway, the other side is where I did some bramble leaves down in County Waterford and I also cut those out and stuck them in because I was left with a blank space on the right hand side. Well I bought myself some funky new shelves from Ikea and my studio which is always a complete mess needed something to arrange and tidy things up and they worked really really well I have to say. I really like the look of them so much so that I decided to do a little sketch and present it to my class as another exercise in getting values right. And not alone did the class do a lovely job, they all did, beautiful jobs. But when they were told to do their homework, which was sketching their own workstations, they really knocked it out of the park. And it was such a joy to see the home places, the places where people sketch, of my students who are scattered all over the world. It's always lovely. Well, a few times every year, the tide is low enough for us to walk out to the island that lies just off the coast near where I live. And I went out walking one misty morning in early September with my friend Benita. And we found ourselves on the island and it was so sunny. And we met some people and they said, now don't fall asleep. We said we wouldn't fall asleep because then the tide will come in and you'll be cut off and you'll be having to wait until midnight for the next low tide. But we did meet a man on the island who persuaded us to stay for a little bit longer and look at his house. And as a result, we nearly got cut off by the tide and we ended up wading our way back to the mainland which was very frightening I have to say and I was feeling very anxious for about 10 minutes. I ended up having to put little Reuben the Terrier in my special doggy backpack to stop him drowning. Yeah it's frightening definitely up to our thighs very scary so just take care if ever you're in the same situation. I did promise you I'd show you a bit more of my sketch pocket and on the left hand side you can see a sort of a diagram of 
all the bits and pieces that come in it. And on the right hand side is how mine looks because there's rather more things in it than I provide when I sell the sketch pocket. Now the sketch pockets will be here in about a month's time. So I'm really hoping to get them over to everybody who wants to buy one in time for Christmas. I have a little bit of sketch pocket anxiety about that, but I promise I'll do my best. And I'm going to have the pre-order link for you as soon as I know the delivery date, which hopefully should be this coming week. If you're interested in getting your hands on one of these beauties, just make sure to sign up to my newsletter and then you'll be in the know. So September, it doesn't just bring acorns and horse chestnuts that aren't very ripe. It also brings beautiful ripe ones, especially if you go to your friend Lorraine's house and she gives you some from her tree. So I went over, pilfered a few and then brought them back to the studio and sketched them. And then we did it in class again and the students loved it because this is a really good exercise in getting gloss and getting values right and all that kind of good stuff. I went down to Waterford to do my little teaching gig in Dunmore East and the title of the course was Nature Sketching. So we went out every morning onto the beautiful beach, which is just beside the art school, which is called Art Form. And we gathered bits of beach, bits of seaweed, like the bits you saw at the beginning of the book, little dead crabs. And we got bits of dead leaves. And what else did we do? Little seed heads and all that kind of thing. And it was great. In the foreground, you can see the good people of Waterford enjoying their rest outside the Strand Inn Hotel, which is where I always stay when I go down. To Waterford and teach for art form and I absolutely love it. I love going down there. Back in Galway once again and the cartoon festival was on. It's comics and cartoons or it's certainly evolved to be comic books and I do love a comic book. It might come as no surprise to you but I never get any love for them. So one day I might get a comic book published but until that day comes I just have to be content with doing I don't know funny little drawings and this is an interview between a couple of people in the cartoon festival. Now, there's a lovely little cinema in Galway City called The Silent Cinema. And off we went into the movies and we watched the uh, um, a sci-fi movie, the early days of sci-fi. And we watched a movie called The Mechanical Man. And The Mechanical Man is terrifying. And it was made in 1921, which is a long time ago. And then I had a space on the right-hand side and I put in this lovely drawing of Buster Keaton, wearing a is it a space suit or is it a diving suit i think it's a diving suit and onto the very last page of my sketchbook and i was trying so hard to get those beautiful autumn leaves and their colors and i finally managed to find a spot in a housing estate in renmore which is on the outskirts of galway city and it, it turns out that a housing estate is a great place to go and look for a, a, a sketch sketching subject because you can pull your car in and just find a subject to draw do you know what i might do that again so if you see my car loitering in your housing estate and this woman with kind of like pale orange hair going gray scribbling away just you know you'll know it's me so that brings us to an end of my little sketchbook i hope you've enjoyed this little tour and might i suggest you take up a sketchbook of your own and get drawing and you can make some magic memories too <laughs>